Hello and welcome back to Mini Discoveries. Now, I have to admit, I haven't had a great deal of opportunity to go out and about and film fresh new creatures. Apparently there's a pandemic on? Who knew? What I have seen a lot of are grey squirrels, and I do have a load of archive footage of them that I've taken over the years, so we're going to focus on grey squirrels today. First off, disclaimer! Grey squirrels are a non-native invasive species. They were introduced in the 1800s, they carry squirrel pox virus, to which they are immune, but red squirrels are not, and they are in many ways responsible for the decline of the red squirrels in the UK. They also damage trees, and that affects forestry. So they're not, they're not Britain's most popular mammal, shall we say. But what we're going to do with that knowledge is crush it down, compartmentalise it, and ignore it. Because, as the old saying goes, any squirrel in a storm. It's a pandemic. We cannot legally go driving off to the Lake District or Northumberland, or up to the Highlands to look for native red squirrels. If you want to learn more about the ecological effects of grey squirrels, then I would direct your attention to an Ecosapien episode all about the topic. Like it or not, they are largely here to stay in the York area, so we might as well appreciate them and learn from them and connect to nature through them. At the start of this year, I saw a lot of squirrels chasing one another through woodland. There's two possible reasons for this. The first reason is a territorial dispute between two male squirrels. I'm not sure I could tell it apart, but if it does end in kind of biting, then definitely having a spat over territory. The other reason for chasing is the mating chase, in which the female is pursued by a male at a much slower pace than territorial disputes, and that may or may not end in mating. They do breed in spring, and if they're successful, and if there's a enough food around later on in the year, they will have another litter, another go at breeding in the summertime. Female squirrels can give birth in what's known as a dray, which is the name for a squirrel nest. A bit of a kind of messy clump made of sticks and leaves. Another place squirrels can nest is in hollows in trees, kind of rotting wood, creates a little kind of miniature cavern, or potentially even bird boxes. In Aiken Woods I've seen quite a few squirrels sitting in bird boxes. I don't know if they're nesting in there or if it's just a temporary shelter. Obviously a squirrel can't fit through the standard aperture of a bird box, but they will quite happily nibble away and make it big enough to fit inside. After mating, a female will give birth to a litter of about three or four young after about six weeks of gestation. Squirrels have eight teats and they become particularly visible along with the bare chest when she's suckling young. After about two months, the young squirrels are ready to go out and about and forage on their own. On a previous Discover Nature field trip, we saw one of these young squirrels in the museum gardens. Very small compared to the rather chunky looking adults, but also that extremely thin tail is a key feature to look for. Later in the year, squirrels will bury food in a process known as caching things like nuts and acorns, and this is to give them a supply of food to see them through the winter when other naturally occurring food will be sparse or will have been eaten. Squirrels don't hibernate in winter, but they do become less active and they will spend more time in the drays or the shelters. So there we have it. It's getting increasingly dark now, so it's probably time to wrap up. Again, I urge you, as always, to go outside, try see some of these things for yourself on the socially distant walks. Thank you very much for watching, stay safe and goodbye.